one of the things I love about what you do is you've always taken big sort of, I don't want to call it risks, but you've invested heavy on surrounding yourself with heavy hitters, interviewing heavy hitters. And also, you know, we all know in social media and the podcast world, it's a lot of the same people making the rounds. But one of the things you've done really well is chase that championship mindset across industry, across niche, from interviewing, you know, former mafia members to Kobe Bryant, presidents of countries. What have you learned? I know it's kind of a, a you know, sort of a sidebar, but what have you learned along your journey of success that has been probably the most interesting or the most, um, I guess, insightful thing that you didn't see on the way up? Now that you've connected, you know, you interviewed Kobe not too long before he passed, rest in peace, Kobe. But, you know, what are some of the things you picked up about the championship mindset that kind of you, you realize later on down the road? So I'm going to say something. I, yeah. I know, this, oh, this guy's being this and that. But I'm going to tell you exactly how I, how I view this. So for me, uh, we had a meeting one day, and I told Mario, I said, Mario, these guys are asking us to go speak at that event. I don't want to speak at that event because if I speak at that event, I'm in that box. Mm -hmm. If I go speak in that event, everyone's going to see me as, a, as in that community or that community or this community. I don't relate to that community. They're great. They're doing fantastic. So I do four speaking gigs per year, not because we get four. We get hundreds per year, but I only do four. Mm -hmm. And it's very intentional which ones I go to and why I do those events. Okay? No problem. So he says, why not this? So let me tell you who I relate to. Mm -hmm. And I wrote all the names on this board, never forget this meeting. I said, here's this guy, here's that guy, here's her, here's that community, here's this, here's that, here's this. Um, these are the three I wanna get close to because these are the three I relate to and I wrote the names down, okay? Everything became very focused about going that route. Make sense? Can Every I ask what those three names are? No, I'm not, I, I, I won't give you the names, yeah. but the, there were these three names that, that I, that I uh, went to. You can ask it, but I'm, yeah, I, yeah. I don't want to, uh, uh, you know. And I said, this is, this is the target on where I'm going after and what I'm not going after. Mm -hmm. And we came back, and he says, Pat, you sure you want to do this? Yes. How come you don't want to do that? I said, that's not the long-term vision of what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm solving for this. This is where I want to go. Let me tell you, it's, it's a little uh, of a risk that you're taking because what happened during that four- or five-year period you have to assume that individually without needing that community, you can make it to that level that garners the right to say, these are the three I relate to, right? So it's not a, a it's a very, very big risk. The easier move is to, to do what? To just go in, hey, can I borrow your, do you understand? Mm -hmm. No. If that guy calls in, I'm going, mm -hmm. okay? If that guy calls in, I want to be part of his community. I want to be in his circle. I want to have a relationship with him, mm -hmm. but I don't want to prostitute my brand. Right. Okay. Uh, just like in high school or in the military, you know, everybody had a clique. And if you're part of that clique, you are that clique. Yeah. So if somebody from the outside sees you, know, oh, he's just a funnels guy. He's just a this guy. Or he's just a that guy. Or he's That's just a motivator. I don't want to be that. Yeah. So I'm like, no, I'm not going to be doing that. So people are like, so how come you never interviewed that one guy? How come you've never interviewed that one guy? How come you've never interviewed this one? Uh, uh, it's not what I'm solving for. I don't want to solve for that. So we were a little bit more intentional in that area. It was a risk, you know, because some people say, well, you got to be kidding me. You would rather interview mobsters than interview them. Uh, this has nothing to do with character. The people that I didn't go in with that community, that has nothing to say about their character. They're very good people, mm -hmm. better people than maybe some of the other, you know, uh, uh, people I interviewed, but I was interested in that story. I wanted to go slightly a different angle. Uh, risk came with it. A lot of risk came with it, but eventually, you know, similar thing to us, when you build your company, you don't go ask money up front. Mm -hmm. uh, if you start your company and you ask money up front, you're giving up equity, you're controlled too early. Mm -hmm. Versus if you wait to go get equity later on, you know, you're, you're asking for cash later on, you're only giving up a little bit of equity. Somebody cannot tell you how to run, how to work, how to do this, how to do that. I don't want to call an approval and say, hey, we're about to pay a million dollars for this. Okay, let us get four people to approve this. It's going to take a month and a half. I don't want to call you and get an approval. I just want to say, here's the money we're spending, right? Mm -hmm. What if I give up 51% of equity to somebody else? I can't do that. Well, I own 83% of the company. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to give it up to lose the control with that. That same thing happens when you all of a sudden go into too many of these circles, then... Um, you, you're, you're losing too much control. Again, 
Uh, some may say, yeah, you know, he's just talking this. This is my philosophy and it's work. 